when it comes to defusing bombs, he's the bomb. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. And you won't believe what happens next. So this one starts in war-torn Baghdad, Iraq. There are soldiers and armor tanks on the streets. People are running helter-skelter, and more soldiers are jumping out of trucks and positioning themselves on the streets. Three American soldiers are controlling this little machine which is giving them a live feed of what they feel could be explosives. And indeed, it's explosives. But this little bot they send there decides to break down. So the leader of the crew, Matthew Thompson, straps up and goes to confront the explosive. As he's making his way there, one of the locals approaches the other soldier, Sanborn. And Sanborn is not loving the distraction. He tells the man to leave, and he eventually does, albeit reluctantly. Finally, Thompson has met the contraption. And what do you think happens? Of course, as he's making his way back, someone who has been watching from a distance presses a button on a phone and detonates the bomb. Our guy falls to the ground. He doesn't survive it. Rip in peace. We now see Sanborn pay his respects and quickly head back out to welcome Thompson's replacement, the new head of explosive ordnance disposal, William James. Man has two first names. They do their introductions and that's it for now. Later, they're in a Humvee together with another soldier, Owen. Wow. Owen is talking lots so Sanborn tells him to shut up and gives him something to do. And that's to get his eyes on the road and try to pave the way for their vehicle. They now arrive at this place where people are looking at them from rooftops, windows, and all sorts of angles. But the streets look so empty. They call it in and start moving stealthily. James sees someone waving an American flag from a distance, so he approaches them. He gets there and sees more American soldiers apparently hiding away. They say they saw an IED not so far away. An IED is basically an improvised explosive device, for those who don't play COD. Anyway, James then asks to be suited up so he can go down there and face the IED. Sanborn thinks he's crazy. Why not send the bot there first? James says nah, he'll be alright. This dude is doing way too much for his first day, I can't lie. And we all know one co-worker like this. Not me though, I'm unemployed. Anyway, he's the boss, so they suit him up and he starts walking briskly towards the IED. He opens tear gas on the floor as he's going, and when Sanborn asks him what the smoke is for, via the walkie-talkie, he airs him and just keeps walking. Um, rude. Sanborn is busy losing his mind while this guy is just walking and basically telling dude to chill out. James now stops his car that was fast approaching. He points a gun at the driver and tells him to step out. For a long moment, they just stare at each other. You know, like, will they? Won't they? The tension is killing me. Eventually, James shoots at the ground to let the man know he means business. He now shoots his windscreen down, goes closer to the driver, points the Glock at his forehead, and tells him to reverse slowly. The man eventually does. Then the soldiers quickly surround him, drag him out of the car, and put him on the ground. James now starts walking back, and on his way, he finds something on the ground. He cuts a wire and then finds another one and starts tracing it. It leads him to a web of similar canisters, as the first one he found. At this point, a man who had been watching him from a window immediately starts making his way downstairs, but he's not coming for James. He's headed somewhere else. James even shows him something, but he doesn't stop moving. After his little adventure, James goes back to the boys and they start taking the suit off. Sanborn is giving him a piece of his mind, but again, James just tells him to chill out and goes to smoke. We now cut to Owen playing video games when this doctor walks in, and from his conversation with the doc, you can tell he plays these games to stop him from drowning in the pool of dark thoughts in his head. He's just like me. Owen is still thinking about Thompson, how he was there one moment and gone the next. It's really messing with his head. We now see this little Iraqi kid they call Beckham trying to sell some DVDs to the soldiers. A couple soldiers ignore him, but James indulges him. He buys a DVD from him and heads back to the base. We now see him brushing his teeth while Sanborn Sanborn is close by shaving. Sanborn tells him yesterday wasn't cool, but James is just being James. Sanborn is not happy about it at all. Anyway, the guys now hit the road and it's pretty much just the same thing as yesterday. But as a suited up James approaches a car, someone from the top of a building shoots at the car and it explodes. Boom! A shootout. James isn't hurt though. He comes to get an extinguisher from the guys, tells Owen to stay with him, Sanborn to go be top cover, and then goes to put out the fire. Sanborn runs to the top of the roof while James puts out the fire. After he does, he opens the trunk. And boy, I'm sure the explosives here can take down an entire city. Now what's James going to do after he sees that? He takes off his suit and his helmet. He says there's enough explosives there to send them all to Jesus. So if he's going to go, he wants to at least be comfortable. Honestly, you have to give it to the guy. The logic definitely checks out. He then gets to work in the trunk of the car, and shortly after, he starts checking the car for the detonator. I'm guessing, but he can't find it anywhere. Meanwhile, Sanborn notices a civilian in a building opposite him, and he alerts Owen to keep an eye on him. Owen says cool, but shortly after, he now sees another civilian. This one with a video camera pointed at them. He immediately alerts Sanborn about it. Sanborn just tells him to keep his head down and make the smart decision. James, meanwhile, is getting frustrated. Sanborn now tells him that they've been here a while and now have a lot of eyes on them. They have to leave ASAP. James says, Roger that, but you should already know this guy by now. He's not leaving until he figures this out. But Sanborn stays telling him that they need to get out of there. And James just gets frustrated and removes the headphones so he can focus. Sanborn tells Owen to tell James to put his headset back on. And the response Owen gets from James is just the middle finger. He just continues doing what he's doing. Based. Sanborn now has eyes on three men standing at the top of a really tall building. He waves to them, but they don't do anything in response. Instead, they wave at the cameraman whom Owen spotted earlier. James has finally gotten what he was after and they can finally leave. He gets into the Humvee and immediately lights one up. When Sanborn joins him, the first thing he does is smack James across the face. Why did that just give me PTSD? Anyway, Sanborn tells him to never turn off his headset 
it again, and James doesn't even say anything. You can see he knows he deserves that. While they're still there, Colonel Reed walks up to James, shakes his hand, calls him a wild man, and asks him how many bombs he has his arm. He says 873. Bro, those are some LeBron numbers right there. Later that day, James is just sitting on a bench smoking, drinking water, and minding his business. When Beckham kicks a ball to him, he picks up the ball and confronts the boy for selling him a fake DVD. Reminds me of the time I accidentally downloaded the wrong Spider-Man. He's asking for his money back, but this is a really brave boy he's dealing with. Beckham basically tells him no way. James now challenges him to a little game. He'll try to score against the little boy. If he succeeds, he'll keep the ball. If he doesn't, he'll give him five bucks. I just have to say though, this is such a waste of the boy's talents. It's bend it like Beckham, not save it like Beckham. Let the boy bend the ball. Anyway, little Bex agrees and he actually saves the ball. John keeps his end of the bargain and hands him five bucks, and even buys another DVD from him. It seems like these two are best buds now. We now cut to Owen working on the trucks when his doctor comes to check on him. Owen says his new team leader is inspiring, and what's his definition of inspiring? That James will soon get him killed. But at least he'd die in the line of duty, proud and strong. The doctor now tries to motivate him by telling him this could be fun. You mean like going to war could be fun? Oh brother, come on now. Owen tells the doc he needs to come out to the field one of these days and see what they go through. I honestly also think he needs to, because war and fun in the same sentence? Only in Call of Duty. The following day, we see the team out in an open field destroying explosives, when James just gets up and says he forgot his gloves at the detonation site, so he gets in the Humvee and goes to get them. While he's out there, Sanborn brings up the idea of blowing James up and making it look like an accident. Owen is not really on board with it, so Sanborn just keeps quiet about it. James gets back, and they start heading back to camp. As they're moving, they spot an SUV and four armed men, so I guess they were forewarned. Get it? Anyway, the SUV has a flat tire, and the men are dressed in Arab clothes so the guys get scared. They stop their vehicle and James and Sanborn get out and start yelling threats at the men, telling them to put their guns down. The foreman does just that and gets on his knees. So Sanborn gets closer and retrieves the pistol from the man's hip, only for the man to uncover his face and reveal that they're actually on the same side. He now takes them to the other guys and they do their introductions. They have two Iraqi prisoners with them who are on the most wanted list. Everybody is much calmer now. Some are making jokes. Sanborn is peeing, while others are trying to get the car fixed. Then boom, from nowhere, one of the soldiers has gone down and the ground in front of them blows up. The soldiers immediately start shooting while looking for cover. They're running helter-skelter now, so they don't even notice when the prisoners run away. The guys are just shooting into the open space without any real target. The leader of the other guys finally notices the prisoners running, so he guns them down. Apparently, they're valuable to them, alive or otherwise. The other guys keep shooting into space, but when the guy in the Humvee gets hit, the snipers are able to trace the bullet to a building. One of them shoots, but he misses. As he tries to adjust to take a better shot, the guys in the building send their own shot, and they do not miss. Sanborn now goes to take over the sniper with James being his eyes. He misses the first shot, as is normal, but after that shot, Shot, he finds out he's out of ammo, so they call out to Owen to get ammo from the guy who had just been shot. He gets it, but he jams, so they send it back to Owen to clean the blood off. He's really struggling with that, so James comes down and assists him, while also offering him some words of encouragement. James goes back up and hands Sanborn fresh ammo. Immediately after, he loads his sniper. Sanborn takes one guy down. He misses the next guy with the first shot, but he gets him with the second. Then two guys come out from the windows and shoot at them. They miss, but Sanborn doesn't. The lads have done really well, but their focus had to be 100 the entire time. I mean, look at a fly almost entering James' eye, but he doesn't even flinch. A whirlwind even comes around and covers their face in dust, but they stay in the same position. James now asks Owen for some juice and he brings it up to him, and this is where you see James' exemplary leadership. He feeds Sanborn the juice first before even thinking of himself. Now while James and Sanborn are focusing on the building, Owen notices movement on the bridge opposite them. He reports it to James, and James basically tells him, do you think 21? So Owen lets 21 bullets fly, and one of them gets the guy. He looks like a fulfilled man. They stay on the lookout for a few more hours until evening, and James finally calls it. They've got an everybody. Buddy. They finally head to camp, and how did they celebrate their victory? With a good old game of friendly wrestling and angry juice. <laughs> Boys, right? After a bit of wrestling, they start digging into James's stuff, and they find a picture of his son, which forces James to start talking about himself. Apparently, he got his girl pregnant, and then they got married after she gave birth, but they got divorced later. But she still lives in his house, and insists they're still together. Woman moment. It's Sanborn's turn to talk about himself. He doesn't have a wife, but the girl he likes just can't stop talking about babies, and he's not ready for babies. James encourages him to have kids. But Sanborn insists he's not trying to be daddy for real. The next thing, James starts going through a box where he keeps stuff that almost took his life. There are bomb components and all that stuff, and his wedding band is also there. I understand you, brother. But enough of the mushy stuff. The boys get back to wrestling. It starts out as pure fun, but it ends with Sanborn pulling a knife on James. At the end of the night, a drunk Sanborn is carried to his bed by James, and in his drunk state, he asks James if he has what it takes to put on a suit, and James tells him no. James goes back to his room and sleeps with his helmet on. The following day, Owen's doctor decides to join the boys on the field. It appears that he took Owen's words to heart. The team now goes to raid a warehouse. Okay, I'm definitely going to play COD once I'm done talking to you guys. These guys are making me miss it. Anyway, the warehouse is empty, but James finds a body. It's a fresh body. Wait, 
Is that Beckham? I don't know, but James seems to think so. By the way, the doc is outside trying to get a couple locals to evacuate in the most psychiatric way possible. Wrong move. Very wrong move. Back inside, James is a wreck. He opens up the stitches on the boy's body and he finds an IED. He now carries the body out to a truck then gets in the Humvee. The doc, by the way, just finally got the locals to evacuate, but he didn't notice that they dropped a sack beside him. So before he turns to join the rest of the guys, he's blown up into smithereens. Owen is now the one who's a wreck. He's weeping like a kid now. Later that night, James goes to call home. His wife, or ex wife now, picks up, but he doesn't say anything. He just stays quiet and then hangs up. The following day, James goes to ask one of the merchants selling DVDs for Beckham. The man says he doesn't speak English, and then James gets a little paranoid. He thinks his merchant could be giving intel to insurgents, but when the soldier stationed there says he can do nothing about it, he leaves. But trust James not to just stay quiet about this. He goes to meet the merchant at close of business in his truck, puts a Glock to his head, and tells him to drive. First of all, the man lied about not speaking English. First red flag. Anyway, the merchant now drives him up to the house of an Iraqi professor. James breaks in to try and take revenge for Beckham, but the professor is being far too kind to him. He asks him to sit and feel at home, and James just feels he's got the wrong guy. So he starts walking out, but then he meets the man's wife, and let me tell you about women. James literally had a gun in his hand, but this woman didn't even flinch. She shouted at him and chased him out of the house. James just kept running and running until he got back to camp. He gets back and he's given the hostile treatment until they're able to confirm he's one of them. His excuse for being out late was that he was at a dance club. And what will this brother say? If I let you in, will you tell me where it is exactly? Nah, these dudes are down bad. Anyway, James is now in his room and Sanborn is trying to talk to him, but he ignores until he can't. Apparently there was a tank explosion somewhere and they have to do a post-blast assessment. Sounds like something I'd have to do after a trip to the bathroom. They head there and you can tell that the explosion literally just happened. There are people in distress screaming for help and properties are still on fire. Must have been a huge explosion. The boys start doing their investigation and Sanborn thinks it was some self-deletion type of explosion, if you get what I mean but James thinks otherwise. He thinks the trigger man did a remote detonation from outside the blast radius. He wants to go out and look for the trigger man, and Owen is like, what the heck? Let's do this. But Sanborn is like, are you guys out of your minds? But then James exercises his authority here and insists they're going. So they head out into the darkness searching for the bad guys. They now see a series of buildings so they split up. As they're going down their individual paths, we just hear gunshots and boom, Owen is gone. James and Sanborn immediately run to look for him after hearing the shots. They first see a freshly unalived body. Then they move further and see two guys dragging Owen away. Way. They immediately go after them. The moment they get into shooting range, James lets the shots fly. He claps the insurgents, but unfortunately he also gets Owen in the leg. They give him first aid and then take him back to camp. James now goes into the shower and just lets the water run over him fully clothed. We all have days like this, don't we? But like is almost always the case, things get better in the morning. You won't believe who James sees the following morning as he's coming out. Beckham being his usual lively self, hawking DVDs. But it's like James is in so much disbelief that he doesn't even say anything to him. He just walks away and enters the Humvee. We now cut to Owen getting airlifted. Lifted. While he's being strapped up, he says that the doctors told him that he'll be walking in six months if he's lucky. And then he goes on a rant blaming his current situation on James and his impulsive nature. But he and Sanborn smile at each other and say their goodbyes. Next thing we see is a bunch of American soldiers pointing guns at a man in a suit and telling him not to come any closer. Then James in a suit shows up and is briefed. Apparently the guy approached them and he said he had a bomb vest strapped to him and he would like them to take it off him. Some of the Americans think he's innocent and he just needs help. But there are a few of them who think this is just a ruse. Sanborn particularly. But you know James. He gets fully trapped and approaches the man. Dangerous game this man is playing. Really dangerous game. And guess what? The explosive has a timer. So James has to be fast while also being careful. He calls Sanborn and tells him what he needs. Sanborn brings them to him in no time. They have two minutes to get this vest off but the lock is not opening. Sanborn says they just leave the man so they can blow up alone. But James insists he'll stay here and keep trying to take it off. He tells Sanborn to leave and save himself. At this point, there's just about 45 seconds left on the clock. Sanborn runs back and tells the rest of the soldiers to get back. James now gets one lock open but he then sees more locks. At this point, he just tells the man that there are too many locks and he can't do it. He apologizes and starts running away. The man just looks to the sky, says a prayer, and a few seconds later, he blows up. James is thrown to the ground, but he survives. He opens his visor, looks up to the sky, and sees a kite. The drive back to camp is a bit quiet and awkward. Sanborn says he hates his place, and James just hands him a bottle of juice. Sanborn is thinking about how today went. If he was just two inches closer, he would have been torn to pieces, and nobody would care. Every inch counts. And it would appear that what he faced today has brought him to make the decision that he wants a son. He now asks James how he deals with the risk of pretty much gambling with his life each time he suits up. James says he frankly doesn't know. Sanborn says he's done with this. He just wants to go home and start a family. When they arrive at camp, kids surround their Humvee and throw stuff at it. Next thing we see is James doing some shopping with his wife and kid. He gets back home and does some cleaning on the roof and then some work around the house. He's telling his wife about some bombings in Iraq and she looks so uninterested. They're obviously 
previously on very different wavelengths. Later, he's playing with his son and he tells the boy that, when he grows up, the things he loves now will not seem so special anymore. The boy doesn't understand a thing he's saying, but James keeps going. He tells him there's only one thing he loves right now. And then boom, we see him back on the field for another one-year mission. Then him in a suit. He's obsessed with his life at this point. He's really smiling as he's approaching an ID. I swear this dude needs help. Moral of the story? Every inch counts.